Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very grateful to be connecting with you today. It is Wednesday, and I think it's about September 6th today. And today's subject should be one that gathers a lot of people's attention. It's about releasing fear. And so if this is a subject matter that has interest to you, I suggest you stick around. It's going to be a good one. As a teacher of this Tao wisdom, I have been able to uh, apply a great many of these soul wisdoms and teachings to assist hundreds of students to transform many of their blockages, including fear. And so for a lot of people, this understanding uh, could be of great value for them. Of course, everybody, it's a little bit different. Um, but fear is not necessarily something the medical world has any understanding of or solution for in the modern um, society anyway. And what I'll be sharing with you today is some of the uh, known root causes of it from the spiritual perspective. And I will also provide some potential solutions and practices for those that uh, stick around long enough to see the value of this wisdom teaching today. So I hope it serves you well. <clears throat> so um, we usually start the wisdom in about five more minutes. I have to wait for everybody to gather uh, and connect with us. And so welcome to all of the new folks that have joined in. Facebook sometimes goes out and grabs entirely new people. Sometimes friends I haven't seen in a while. Uh, Kristen Webster, uh, great to see you. And uh, so there's uh, always opportunities. Aloha Guillaume. I hope you're sticking around as well. I know some of us have very busy jobs, very busy responsibilities. We can't necessarily stick around. So if it is something that's of interest to you and you'd like to catch it later, I recommend you subscribe on my Facebook page and then also uh, friend me if you're not already a friend. And um, you'll be able to come back and watch it later. And also when I go live, you'll know. And this is for all those that are new. And I see somebody saying good night, so it must be either they're not familiar with the English language or it's very late. We have a lot of Europeans tuning in. Sometimes it's 2 o'clock in the morning over there. But sometimes they just wake up because they want to, to uh, nourish their soul. So I'm grateful for everybody's presence. <coughs> so while we're waiting for others to join us, I will share with you a little bit about uh, this last few days. Uh, today I just did a practice with the, um, there's about 17 to 20 people who have joined my 12 Weeks to Awakening Your Spiritual Channels program in which we focus on the five energy centers, the uh, seven chakras, and the energy and matter channel and in consecutive weeks. And the first week was dedicated to the soul, um, understanding the nature of your soul, the nature of the interconnectedness of you and your soul, the energy body, etc. And so I did a practice with all of these beautiful souls this morning as a midweek practice and uh, it was quite astounding. I received some beautiful insights uh, from the divine um, that I shared and some beautiful insights from each person's soul and so had to set the stage for the next 11 weeks. So if that sounds of interest to you, you can learn more uh, by coming to my website asoulhealer.com and uh, you can register there. It's on the first page. You'll see the links for it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to acknowledge everyone who's jumped in. Welcome, Becky. Good to see you. Aloha again, Kristen Webster. Uh, and aloha and welcome to Lisa Prado. Welcome, Becky. Welcome also to Jess. And good to see you here, Crane. Aloha, Pauline Sorez. Welcome, Amanda Yerkes. Welcome also to Cindy. And aloha, Michelle. Welcome, Deborah Miller. Aloha also to uh, Candy. And welcome, Michelle Prosperity. Welcome, Bev Pergo. Haven't seen you in a while, Bev. Good to see you. Also, Janet Garal. Welcome, Janet. And also, M.A. Drade. Welcome. Aloha to Kate Nicole. Welcome, Janice Crosby. Welcome also to uh, Michelle Wright. Got three Michelles today. We're excited. Welcome also to Vanessa. Welcome, Jose. And Aloha, Randy. I think we've caught up to everybody. I'm sure more people will join us as we go. <clears throat> I was late in posting today. That doesn't help always to get a, a bunch of people in the live feed. 
but it was a very busy day. Uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. So thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about this. I know sometimes Facebook doesn't even allow you to share. Uh, the buttons disappear, so they've got their unusual things going on with their Facebook feeds. But in any case, we're going to do as we normally do and connect heart to heart and soul to soul. We're going to start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains gently pointed towards heaven, connecting heaven into our heart center. Let us close our eyes and I will invite the beings of light in to join us. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, our beloved original creator, <clears throat> all of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, all masters and ascended masters, spiritual mothers and fathers, Lama, Sifus, Gurus, saints, Buddhas, and Bodhisattvas, all angels, healing angels, archangels, we love you, love you, love you. We honor you, deeply appreciate you. We thank you for your unconditional service to humanity. We ask as appropriate for you to please join us today to come to sit in our heart centers and bless each and every one of us to be a better servant to humanity. Bless each and every one of us with the wisdom of today for the subject of releasing fear. <clears throat> I wished for all of us to have no fear but as we move forward, we must deal with this subject matter. So we ask heaven to please bless us accordingly. Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, we deeply appreciate you. We ask you to please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to please join with us, to chant with us, to serve with us. So, for those that are new, this is a mantra. It is also a healing blessing. Uh, and so you may make a request silently. And uh, if you enjoy the song, which you most likely will, uh, it's recommended that you download it from lovepeaceharmony.org. Uh, the copyright has been removed, and it's asked that you share it around the world. It's currently uh, available in 43 languages. So it's a song to serve humanity. So I will chant it to serve all of you to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Let us begin. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, Lula, I wash in Erling, I I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me make an adjustment on my phone. Okay. So we've had some new folks jumping in here. So welcome also to <coughs> Alifas. Welcome. Welcome also to Tamia. Welcome, Alyssa. And welcome to Kristen Strachan. Welcome. Uh, Crystal Bondar, Bondar, Bondar. Uh, welcome, Melissa Reiki. Welcome also, Tiffany Ann. Aloha, Johnny. Aloha, Linda. Aloha, Dove. Great to see you here, Dove. Aloha, Lori Goodman. And welcome, Brenda Hutton. Aloha, Magdalena. If I missed you, please forgive me. For all of my students that are in the 12 week program, I did post this morning's um, recording of the training 
in, uh, in our Facebook chat, okay? So welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I would like to see, please, uh, everybody that's new, uh, kind of tell me. I'm new, so I know how many new people we have. Uh, it does, um, I have to give some preface to the information if there are new folks here. So I got to wait about a minute or two for that because of the, the Facebook, okay? So we have Melissa's new. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you for joining. Welcome, Talitha. Thank you so much for joining. <coughs> Thank you, Lori Goodman. I appreciate your sharing. Thank you for joining. Aloha and welcome, Kayla. Okay, so we know there are some new folks. And Michelle Wright is new. So I will give a, a little bit of background so that when I move into the specific information, it will have some meat on the bones and make a little more sense. So um, my name is Paul Fletcher. Uh, welcome, Crystal. Thanks for sharing that you're new. And the word master in front of my name simply means that I am very educated in the subject matter that I share. So I've been doing uh, this for about 10 years. And my teacher is Dr. Master Shah. The wisdom that he teaches is what I'll be sharing today, and it carries with it a great deal of weight that, if applied, could bring significant benefit and value. There are many people that have followed these live streams for half a year, a year, and they can validate the efficacy of the teachings. Um, and it's all about the nature of soul, the interconnectivity of our soul to our physical, emotional, mental body. A great deal of our blockages, in this case the subject matter is fear, has a relationship to our soul. And um, following the teachings that Master Shah shares, here's a picture of Master Shah for those that are new. Okay, this is one of his books called Dao Song Dao Dance. Welcome Amanda Beatty, and welcome also to Martha Alice. Welcome Janet. <coughs> and um, so when, uh, in all of his books, one of the things that he teaches is the nature of soul. So I will give a brief teaching on that so we have a foundation to work with. So he shares that <clears throat> the nature of, uh, that everyone and everything has a soul, okay? Everyone has a soul, but so does everything. Now for some people that's a little, hmm. Um, <clears throat> but if you bear with me as I go through the nature of this foundation, it might help you to have a greater understanding. Welcome, Krista. Thank you for telling me you're new as well. And so, if everything has a soul, then why? Well, the answer is because everything is from Creator. Creator created all the energy and matter that then became to manifest form. So everything is infused with Creator Spirit, therefore everything has a soul. That's the first wisdom that, that we share with you. The second is that every soul has a purpose, and that purpose is to serve. So, <clears throat> If everything has a soul, does fear have a soul? Well, you know, how, do you, how do you say that fear has a soul? It's an intangible thing, right? It's, it's a thought form. It's something that activates on the mind and creates an emotion. So how could it have a soul? Well, again, <coughs> excuse me. I apologize. I uh, had a little milk product before, so it, it creates a little blockage in my breathing passage. Um, so when we... Recognize that everything has a soul. Creator created everything from thought, right? And so all thoughts precede a manifestation. All thoughts precede the actual do putting forth of something that comes into physical manifestation. So thought actually has soul as well. Uh, and what's the purpose of every soul? The purpose of every soul is to serve. Hmm. So you're telling me that fear is serving me? Well, I'll get to that down the road, but a big part of the baseline of this teaching is an understanding of the nature of soul, so that when I go into how to release fear and we apply the soul wisdom, it will make sense, all right? So I wanted to give you that as a base foundation. Now, another foundational teaching that Master Shah brings to the table is the nature of what has been agreed upon throughout the various belief systems that are out there. I don't teach religion. I don't teach belief systems. I, if I, if I were to label what I teach, it would be the nature of spirituality or the nature of uh, what is natural, Tao, if you will. Um, 
but one of the beautiful things I appreciate about my teacher is he honors everyone's belief system and what he shares is in such a way that it can fit within yours. So he shares that, for example, in the Christian teachings, what you sow is what you reap. And the Buddhist teachings, they'll say karma, good karma, bad karma. <clears throat> If you look at the Quran and those teachings, they refer to the sins of the father uh, are visited upon the sins of the son or ancestral debts, etc. So everyone has their own way of saying uh, basically the same thing, that if you do bad unto others, it will rebound unto you at some point in time. That's a variable there in some of the uh, Western philosophies and teachings. They believe there's one life one time around and you're done. Eastern teachings believe in more than one time around. Uh, that's my belief system. You don't have to agree. But either way, um, if we recognize that, uh, that the ancestors' uh, choices impact us, uh, even the Western teachings of the Christianity speak about that. They talk about how the sins of the Father are visited upon the Son. And that means if Dad does good things and helps people, if Grandpa and Great Grandpa does good things and helps people, then we have a good life. And if they do unpleasant things and take advantage of people, then our life is not as smooth as maybe it could be. <clears throat> the, uh, our sins, our good choices are visited upon our children as well. And so, again, regardless of the belief system, the truth tends to follow through. So if you believe in one life or many lives, it tends to work the same all the way through. The relevance is in soul. So bringing it all the way back to soul, your soul is the carrier of all of the lifetimes and or uh, all of the messages, um, good and bad services offered to others. So you might only have one life, uh, but your ancestors also may have made good or bad services and that impacts you in this lifetime. The soul is the carrier of all of those pleasant and unpleasant choices for uh, upon all souls. Okay, So that being a foundation, it sets the stage for why do we have unpleasant experiences in our life, including the condition of fear, which is the subject matter for today. So fear is an emotion uh, and it has associations. In, um, in uh, Western medicine, they're not quite sure how to deal with it. They basically give you a pharmaceutical. Um, the way uh, that we are taught, I am taught as a master teacher, is that everything is in a hierarchy of order in terms of how things come into uh, manifestation. The top of the hierarchy is soul, then heart, then mind, and then energy, and then matter. And healing works in the same way. If you heal things at the level of matter, which is how, um, which is at the bottom of the of the rung, and that's how Western medicine approaches things. They 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 adjust the matter using pharmaceuticals, or if it's a, if it's a cancer or something like that, they try to cut it out, and so they adjust at the level of matter. But it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't affect the energy that caused the condition. It doesn't affect the mind that has a factor associated with the condition. It doesn't affect the heart that is part of the message delivery system. And it doesn't affect the soul, which is the precursor to what caused the problem down here at the matter level. Okay? And so fear is no different than any other thing that happens to us. If we have financial blockages, if we have cancer, if we have fear, if we have uh, uh, relationship issues, it's irrelevant, the terminology, the uh, order is soul, is where everything originates from, heart, mind, energy, matter. So when we deal with things at the level of origination, we can have a far superior set of results. And so I encourage you to maintain an open mind because the, the value of the wisdom uh, that will be offered here today has, has served many, many souls and potentially saved many people's lives because they dealt with things at the root cause. We could be having the subject matter on depression. It would still be the same discussion. We just apply it to a different subject matter. And so uh, welcome also to Heather McCormick. Welcome, Angie. Welcome... Uh, Heather McNee, excuse me. Uh, welcome to Linda. Welcome Alan Whitman. Welcome also Liliana. And um, welcome Linnea. Thank you for joining. So in the uh, Eastern philosophies or Eastern medicines, they have a different <coughs> take on things. They don't look at the matter level like the Western medicine model. They look at it from a completely different perspective. Uh, the Eastern medicine model is built around the five elements, uh, wood, 
wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Uh, they recognize the nature of the, the north, south, east, west, the nature of um, the summer, winter, and fall, uh, and of course spring. They recognize the nature of wind and thunder and wetness and dryness in the body. They bring um, their healing modality, which includes acupuncture, various forms of unique massages, not the typical we see in the west. Um, they also would use things like Tai Chi and Qi Gong to bring balance to uh, an imbalance. So if you went to see an Eastern uh, uh, medical practitioner, they would look at the condition of fear uh, from the perspective of the five element theory. The five element theory recognizes aloha uh, to all the folks that are joined in and new folks. Welcome to uh, uh, Leah and thank you for joining. And so the five element theory would say that there is an emotion associated with each of the five elements. There is a uh, organ associated with each of the five elements. And the element of fear has an association with the kidneys. Huh. So for about 50% of the year, people are like, really? First time I heard that. But it's actually a direct association according to the Eastern medical approach. So how would they deal with fear? Um, to the best of my understanding, and maybe there's more than I understand, where it potentially is, but what they might suggest, for example, is um, doing practices to boost power to the kidneys, giving you herbs to bring balance to the kidneys. They would do acupuncture to bring balance to the kidneys. And it's reasonable and likely, actually, that your fear would diminish. It's actually a very true possibility, and that has happened for people. So it makes you go, hmm, again, so you're telling me if you build up my kidneys, it helps remove fear? How is that possible? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is what I have been taught and what I have uh, seen in practice actually work. So um, the emotions do have an association to the organs. So each of the organs connect to each other. Anxiety connects to the heart. Uh, worry connects to the spleen, uh, and so forth. I could, I could label them all. So if, for example, the, the, the element that precedes the uh, kidneys, the element is called the um, metal element, and it precedes the water element. So if the lungs are weak, they're sucking energy from the kidneys to keep themselves in balance. This again is Eastern medicine philosophies. And uh, therefore the kidneys might be weaker than they normally would. Therefore, maybe there's a little bit too much fear. So that same Eastern medicine practitioner might beef up your lung health as well as uh, other things that they recognize through their processes that could be a bit weak. So it's more of a holistic approach. But again, on the hierarchy of things, which is souls at the top, then heart, then mind, then energy, and then matter. Energy is above matter, and that's where the Eastern practitioner deals with things at. Uh, and when the energy practitioner puts in the needles, and they do the herbs, and they do the special massages, and they do the Tai Chi Chi Gong, uh, the energy does shift. It moves. The people feel better. And the matter that is blocked, what does matter mean? It means the, the cells... And it means the, the organs and systems. So in between the cells, the cells are bouncing off of each other. If you ever look at cells under the microscope, they're very rarely, you know, in, in all in perfect shape. Some are very misformed and they're kind of bouncing off ones that are well formed. And, and so that's how the, the blood system works. Blood is matter. When you adjust the energy and it allows the chi, which is energy, to flow through the cells, to th flow through the organs and systems, then people feel better. That's why people go to an acupuncturist and they feel better. That's why they go there with pain, they stick a needle in and walk out, many people feel better. Why? Because the chi moved, therefore the chi affected the matter. So we're again, we're back to the hierarchy. Matter does not affect energy, but energy does affect matter. Matter can have a small effect on energy, but if the energy is still blocked, it doesn't matter if you cut out the cancer or whatever, if the energy is still blocked, it will still impact the matter uh, inappropriately. And so uh, this is the interconnectivity of the flow of how we bring healing to ourselves. And welcome Rowena, welcome also Megan Varna, welcome Laura Shelton, welcome Bernice, and welcome also Monica. Let me get some water. Welcome also to Tina Bakala. And so when we 
uh, deal with things on the Western medicine, we, we can adjust part of it. When we deal with things on Eastern medicine, we can adjust part of it. Very few people are familiar with how to deal with fear on the level of spiritual. And that's why I set this foundation so that when I speak about soul and why soul works, you now have an understanding, okay? So it's not that these other methodologies don't have an efficacy. They do. It really depends on how big is the problem. As I mentioned earlier, uh, soul is the carrier of all of our lifetimes of unpleasant and pleasant services. Those unpleasant and pleasant services bring us our good experiences and our not so pleasant experiences in this life. And accordingly, they can bring us good health, bad health. They can bring us emotions that are balanced or unbalanced emotions. They can bring us either way. So when we deal with things at the level of origin, we can very, uh, very effectively have a, a very positive impact on it. Doesn't mean it's going to go away entirely. I still have fear. Been working on this stuff 10 years, but it's dramatically diminished from what it used to be. And so when we uh, apply soul power, what does it do? Well, we just described describe the layers. Soul is the carrier of message, and it impacts the heart. The heart then impacts the mind. The mind then tells the energy what to do, and the energy therefore moves the matter. Who here has heard of mind over matter, right? Mind over matter uh, really has to go through the energy because the mind moves the chi. Now, the dilemma here is that the heart is in between the mind and the soul. For many of us, the heart is not open. It has a direct association to the imbalance of the kidney and the fear because the kidneys and the heart are fire and water. In, in um, Eastern medicine, they're exact opposites. So when fire and water are in conflict or one is weak and one is strong, it creates problems. When fire and water is out of balance, it creates um, uh, all kinds of problems, but including sleep issues. There, there's just a lot of problems. And so um, from the understanding of soul, if the heart is not open, the soul is delivering the message, but it's, it's, it's not being heard by the heart. The soul is saying, this is how you heal the fear problem. The soul is giving information to dissolve the fear problem, to see it from the perspective of the soul, to see it from the higher perspective so that it can be released, because it did come to service. Remember, what's the one of the root foundational teachings? Everything has a soul, and what's the purpose of every soul? It is to serve. So the fear has a purpose, and it's not to make us miserable. It is to serve us, but we can't see that. We don't understand that because the soul's message is not getting to us. The mind is ruling, and the mind is dictating the energy and matter. And so it's actually impacting the matter negatively. It, ca it causes, if somebody has a lot of fear, it causes weak kidneys. If somebody has weak kidneys, it also creates fear. So it's kind of a dichotomy. But in either case, when we uh, start operating by opening the heart and when we start working with um, things at the level of soul, then the soul guidance comes through the heart. The heart then becomes in control of the mind. Many of us do not have control of our mind because our hearts are not open and or we don't uh, tell our heart to control our mind. We respond from the mind instead of from the heart. Okay, I see that happen in a lot of relationships. Um, we, uh, we, we make error choices from the mind instead of from the heart. Sometimes the heart says, this is not the right guy. I thought, yeah, but he's so cute. And then we make mistakes six months down the road. So, you know, this is an example. Fear, according to the traditional wisdoms, has its root in our spiritual blockages. And the wisdom says very simply that we or our ancestors made unpleasant choices that have brought these same conditions upon others. We or our ancestors may have um, taken somebody's land and that created great fear. Fear that they would not be able to feed their children. Fear that they don't know how they're going to live. Fear that they don't have enough coal for the winter and that they could starve. Uh, and freeze to death. You don't know. Uh, you might not directly scare somebody, 
that's what people think about when they think of fear. It might be um, where you ask somebody to go on stage and speak, and they had stage fright, and they were shocked for life. Who knows? Maybe that's why you would have stage fright. We don't really know the necessary precursor, but we know enough to know that one begets the other. This is the, it's, it's a universal law. That which you put out is that which you return. And so when we deal with this at the level of soul, with that baseline acknowledgement, we can then start making the appropriate adjustments and start resolving things from the top down. Okay, so I hope the way I've explained this, it makes sense. And we've had some folks join us late. I hope you didn't miss too much. Uh, some of you are veterans, so I think you got the baseline. Uh, welcome, Tiffany. Uh, if you missed any of this and I'm saying things that don't make sense, I did preface all this in the beginning. So what I'm saying now would make sense. So please bear with it and go back and watch again afterwards and it'll all make sense. Welcome, Brianne. And welcome also, Bagna. And so, how do we adjust? What do we do? We apply the four power technique. We want to look at bringing balance into two areas. Of course we want to look at bringing balance into the water element, which is the element presiding over the kidneys and the emotion of fear. Of course we want to address that. But we also need to open the heart so that our soul blockages uh, can be released and so that we can receive appropriate messages. So the ideal scenario is to open the heart and boost power to the water element which will allow us to further enhance uh, and release these blockages. Now, one of the key factors, of course we can do the practice for these, but the practice will only give you a 50% benefit. Of the, of the possible maximum benefit that can be gained in this practice, you will only get 50% if you just do the first part, which is opening the heart and boosting the kidneys, boosting the water element. The second part must be done if you want to get 100% of the potential uh, value, okay? And that is the forgiveness practice. Now, uh, almost every one of us have been to church at some point in time, or been to a synagogue, or been to a temple, or something of that nature. And in all of this time, we have the ability to um, uh, do forgiveness. But most of us do not truly have a good understanding of what it is, how to do it, why to do it, how often to do it, and why should we do it often? So I have to give a little teaching on that because there's at least 10 new people today, okay? So why do we do forgiveness, how to do it? Forgiveness is exceedingly important. It is probably the most important thing you can employ in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you ask forgiveness for? Very simple. Look at any place in your life you're suffering. If you are suffering, at some point in time, you or your ancestors created that exact same suffering upon others. It's not rocket science. So if you ever wonder, what do I ask forgiveness for? Look where you're suffering at. If it's finances, relationship, fear, okay? It doesn't matter. Whatever you're suffering from, you or your ancestors, unfortunately, you weren't the beautiful soul you are today. At some point in time, you made choices that brought that form of suffering upon others. That's the baseline simplicity of it, okay? So when you do forgiveness, you need to do it from this place of awareness. Um, when you ask forgiveness, you ask forgiveness uh, not for some blind thing. You ask forgiveness for all of the harm or suffering that you had brought to others for this condition of fear. And how do you know how deep to go? Because some people go, well, it feels very... Um, methodical to me. It doesn't really get deep. You know, I, I do my forgiveness practice every day, but it doesn't, you know, it's just kind of rote forgiveness. It doesn't really go deep. Okay, I teach you how to go deep. How deep is your fear in this example? If you have anxiety, how deep is your anxiety? Okay, if you have severe poverty, how deep is your severe poverty? The amount of pain you have is the amount of the depth of the request for forgiveness. If you're in severe fear, you need to be deeply, deeply regretful for bringing that same level of suffering that has kept you in the home or kept you from doing whatever it is you're doing. You need to be like, my God, I can't believe that 
I or my ancestors would create such suffering upon another that they would feel like I feel, because I know how crappy I feel, right? You have to really put yourself in their shoes. You have to take yourself out of your world and just imagine how bad somebody else felt because you know how bad you felt. You just put the shoe on the other foot. You do your forgiveness from that depth. You, you, if, if I or my ancestors have been this unpleasant to others, please, I am so sorry. I can't imagine. I'm not the kind of person that would do that. Now, I know I'm not, but I know I'm experiencing this for many years and and it's not going away. So there's only one possible solution. I understand the nature of soul. I understand soul carries these blockages. I understand I've had this. It's got to be karmic. There's no other possibility. I need to do a very depthful, deep, heart-wrenching, crying, deep in your soul forgiveness. You will discover that if you can get that deep, it could go away in one day. It could dissolve literally overnight. That is a very real possibility. Why? Because karma is not distributed to us by our beloved God. God doesn't say, I hate you, I love you, I'm going to make you suffer, I'm going to make you wealthy. That's not our Creator. Our Creator gave each of us free will. He made us all equal with pure love. He said, okay, have a good time, do what you want. Some chose in inappropriate actions, some chose good actions, loving and selfless actions. And you know, many, many billions of years later, here we are. We're dealing with the consequences of what we don't remember. Regardless, that's where we're at. And so when we go into this deep place, it, it's recognized. It's recognized by all of the souls that have been uh, inappropriately impacted. Because all those souls have soul memory. And those souls say, wow, finally they got it. Finally they realized that it wasn't okay to do da 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 and cause this fear. Okay, finally they've learned their lessons. We're done. We leave. And the karma leaves. The negative energies that are resting at the level of soul leave. You have to understand your soul is the carrier of the messages of all lifetimes. All the good, all the bad, those messages are there. If you have sore back, one of the ladies that's watching right now, she's had a miracle. Four and a half years of back pain. It's been gone for months now. Uh, nothing worked. She tried everything. What happened? She received a blessing at the soul level. I was 2,000 miles away. I gave her a blessing to clear the messages on her soul, the negative debts on her soul. She did her forgiveness practices as she was asked to do. And it took a, a, you know, a couple of weeks and it just, it's been gone ever since, at least to the best of my knowledge it is. And so she can validate if she'd like, but uh, I haven't heard anything back from her. I know she's been working. She hasn't done that in four years. And so why did it work? Because the the, the debts that were causing it in the first place were completed. That's what forgiveness does. So you can do the practice all you want. You don't do the forgiveness, you get 50% result. Okay? I hope that makes sense now. Again, for those that came in late, you only got half the story. You didn't get the first part that laid the foundation. If you're intrigued, I encourage you to go back watch from the beginning. Okay, I have a strong signal here, um, so I think it's just for some of you that's having this issue. I'm pumping out at 4G at a seamless stream, so um, I will just continue. So now we're going to do a practice. We're going to include bringing balance to the heart, bringing balance to the kidneys, and we're going to include a forgiveness practice. My recommendation is that you continue to do this. Um, each day, especially if you have this condition. Okay, you want to dedicate 15 minutes each day, more if the condition is heavy, more if the condition is, you know, keeping you from having a normal life. Okay, I also recommend that if you have a heavy fear condition, contact me directly. I do extraordinary special blessings. They could, they could range in the line of miracle, and. Um, they could save you a lot of time and effort of self-work. If you have minor fear, no big deal, just do the practice. If you have major fear, no big deal, okay? All right. So let us practice. Let us stop talking about things that are not relevant to today. 
uh, not relevant to um, this teaching and stay focused because I'm here to serve you. Okay, guys? Close your eyes. Sit up straight. Place your hands together in the soul light, soul service hand position. It's like a prayer position, but the left hand gently drops in front of the heart center. The right hand remains pointed up towards heaven. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath into your lower abdomen. Fully connect. Fully connect. Breathe out. Deep breath in. And release. One more time. Breathe out. And release. Let us connect. Dear our you can repeat silently or out loud wherever you're at. <clears throat> Dear our beloved divine creator, my beloved divine creator, I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. My name is, you state your name. I am very honored for the opportunity to release fear in my life. Fear of success, fear of money, fear of relationship, fear of whatever. State it. I am very grateful for your blessings at this time. We will now do a forgiveness practice. If it is comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear all souls in all time, I love you, I honor you, I appreciate you. I wish to ask your forgiveness. I recognize that I have fear in my life in very specific areas. And I recognize that I may have caused or my ancestors may have caused fear upon you and others. I truly would not wish that upon anybody. I am not that kind of person today. But I recognize that in the past I or my ancestors may have made unpleasant choices and created unpleasant conditions upon you or your loved ones. I wish to ask most sincerely for your unconditional forgiveness. I ask my beloved Creator for forgiveness. To all of the souls in all time that have ever brought conditions into my life that has created fear. I offer you my unconditional forgiveness. I wish to release you fully and completely of any spiritual debt that you have with me. And I ask that you forgive me if I have created problems for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now we've done the forgiveness. We need to connect to our heart. We need to connect to our kidneys. Again, open heart is necessary. Kidneys are the water element associated with fear. So now we connect to these souls. Continue to repeat as comfortable. Dear the soul of my beloved heart, the soul of my kidneys, the soul of fear and the water element, I love you all. You have the ability to self-clear your blockages. You have the ability to release fear. You have the ability to open my heart. Do a good job. Thank you. Okay? So this is uh, something I haven't explained yet. It's called soul communication with the soul of your heart and your kidneys. Uh, keep coming back and watching. You'll learn more. But we're going to move forward. So place one hand on your heart one hand on your kidneys. If you cannot reach your kidneys, then place them, uh, place the other palm on your lower abdomen, but put your mind on your kidneys. Okay? So one hand on your heart, one hand on your kidneys, or in the front of your body. Visualize light radiating between them, balancing the fire and the water element. Balancing um, the uh, imbalances, opening the heart, releasing the blockages in the kidneys, releasing the fear. Okay, just see it in light. We're going to chant 
um, a very simple mantra that may sound too simple for you, but one of the secrets is what you chant is what you become. You already believe that if you think it, it will come, mind over matter. Well, it's also true. What you chant is what you become. So we're going to chant balance, fire, and water element, release fear. Okay? So repeat after me. Balance, fire, and water element, release my fear. 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 Balance, water, and fire 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 element, release my fear. And you can say it silently, visualizing the light radiating between. We're going to do a practice in a few minutes to boost power to your kidneys as well. Right now we are balancing these elements. Continue to repeat. Balance, water and fire elements, releasing my fear. 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 So now, place your full attention on your kidneys. Again, you can have one hand in the front of your body, at the abdomen, one hand over your kidneys. Visualizing both kidneys receiving beautiful golden radiant light. We're going to boost power to the kidneys now. And we're going to do that with a mantra that you may not have heard of. It's called Yo Ya Yo Dao. And Yo Ya is a, is a um, sound power for boosting this area. It's a specific vibrational tone. Okay? Dao is a frequency. So chant with me while visualizing the light in your kidneys. Yo Ya Yo Dao. Yo Ya Yo Dao. Yo ya yo dao, 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 yo ya yo dao. Yo ya, yo dao, 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 yo ya, yo dao. Yo ya yo dao. So for those that have just joined us, we are chanting to bless the kidneys related to the condition of fear. One palm is on the kidneys, the other on the lower abdomen. You may choose to join and chant. Yo ya yo dao. Yo ya yo dao. Yo ya yo dao, 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 yo ya yo dao. Yo ya, yo dao, yo ya, yo dao. Silently, 
ยโยาโยดาวโยยาโยดาวโยยาโยดาวโยยาโยดาวโยยาโยดาวโยยาโยดาว See the light bursting in your kidneys each time you chant. Yo ya yo dao. Yo ya yo dao. Yo ya yo dao. Blasting out the fear. Yo ya yo dao. 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 好，好，好。Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so that was about eight minute, maybe ten minute practice for the water element, balancing the water and fire element, for boosting power to the kidneys. Probably not going to create a huge result. For you and the condition of fear in that short period of time. However, it does not minimize the power of the practice when done every day. Uh, we have seen people practice this that had the kind of stage fright where they would literally not even go near a stage, and they practiced and practiced and practiced just this, and they were able to walk on stage and give a speech no problem. Now they did it for months. But it gives you an example of the power of the practice, and the most important part was that when this story was told by this person that did this, they said, "You know, it didn't even dawn on me until I was actually on stage and speaking that I was on stage and speaking, and even when it dawned on me, I was like, 'Oh, okay,' and I just kept going forward." So, in other words, the strengthening of the kidneys had the natural side effect. Of decreasing the fear, okay. When you add the forgiveness practice to it, obviously much much better. So again, for all of those that are new, as a master teacher, I have received extraordinary uh, blessing abilities. These include the ability to release the negative debts uh, at the level of the blockages for fear. And then I can offer what's called a Jindan light ball, which is for the opposite of fear,、uh, which I believe is peace and calm. And so,、uh, with this kind of a blessing, it releases the root causes, creates a light wall protection、uh, that was bringing those、uh, fears to you.、Uh, the light wall protection, in essence, disallows the previous、uh, karmic conditions or negative、uh, conditions from returning. And then the jindan can create a different、uh, emotional condition of peace and calm. Okay, this is available、uh, through my services on my website or by Facebook messaging me personally, so I can serve you with that. I also do a calling to my、uh, just started 12-week spiritual awakening program, and this is for awakening the spiritual channels, including the third eye. The other spiritual channels most people don't know about: the five major energy centers, the seven chakras, and the energy and matter channel.、Um, if you think you know what chakras are, did you think you know the solution to fear? Did you think you know that? Right. So you learned a lot today. What do you think you will learn about the five major energy centers and chakras? A lot more than you knew. That's for sure. And when you piece them all together, you open your spiritual channels and reconnect to the divine. The Kristen Rojas has posted in her chat box the link. You can learn more about it.、Uh, I also、um, can give you the first week's session training, and all the sessions are recorded, so you don't miss anything. So, if that's of interest to you, please follow the links, and you can connect with me、uh, individually. Okay. So, I thank you for this opportunity to serve you today. Um, so Liliana, please follow Kristen Rojas's links. 
um, lovepeaceharmony.org. You can download it from there, but I believe she's put the links to where you can find the downloads, okay? And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. To all the beings of light who have come to serve on this beautiful day, please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for sharing. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.